it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. Ah, oh, Christmas. A time to relax at the end of the year and enjoy time with family and friends. And perhaps if you're lucky, a time to party as well. Although, based on tonight's story, that may not always be a good thing. So here we go. We're... There's something strange about the FBI's holiday party. By Suspicious Nail 949. December 23rd, 2003. The rookie looked like he was just about jittery enough to shake his suit off as he made his way over to the hulking brute of a man that was Agent Kane Schultz, better known by his nickname, Bull. Like his namesake, Bull was massive, towering over anyone he spoke to, and also, like his namesake, he had quite the temper, known equally for his fits of rage as his splendid track record as an agent. Um, uh, Mr. Schultz? The rookie asked, approaching his desk. Sitting in his office chair, Bull nearly matched the rookie in height. He slowly turned around, clearly annoyed at having been interrupted, and the look he gave the rookie incited a gulp. What do you want? He growled. Can't you see I've got work to do? The rookie had gone through a full FBI training, along with the extra steps required to join the supernatural branch neither of which being a mean feat. But this, standing in front of Bull Schultz, clearly terrified him. I, uh, it's, I just, it's, it's my, um, he stuttered. Uh, spit it out, Bull snapped, and he jumped. Sorry, uh, sorry, he quickly apologized. There's just, um, one of the older agents told me to ask you for the file on a creature. Oh yeah, what is it? Bull asked folding his arms as he knew something was up. It's some the... <laughs> the rookie glanced down at the paper in his hands one last time, cleared his throat and said, yeah, The biggest dickers. He quickly followed it with, I know it doesn't sound real, but... Agent... You want the file on biggest dickers? Bull repeated, leaning his chin on his hand. Oh... You know, that doesn't sound like... The rookie said before trailing off. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Yeah, see if you can find some common sense while you're at it. Bull snapped, pointing away from the desk, and the rookie hastily retreated. Jesus Christ, these kids keep getting younger every year. Then he stood up, glancing around for a moment. Pearson? Pearson? Damn it, you're a waste of bureau resources. Get some work done. I ducked back into the office I shared with my partner, Colt Tally, just before Bull had started searching for me, and I let loose fits of laughter, much to the chagrin of the room's other occupants. Would you grow up? He sighed with disdain, pushing back from his desk to look down on me. We play the same joke on every class of rookies, and it was never terribly fun to begin with. I climbed to my feet at that, dusting off my uniform with a smile still spread across my face, and said, Without tradition, what are we? Hazing the rookies is a mainstay of American society. We are the supernatural branch of the FBI, not a high school football team, Colt reminded me. Protecting the nation is our tradition. Well, whatever, I replied, rolling my eyes and slinking back into my office chair when I saw Bull give up on trying to find me. After a full moment of staring at my computer screen, I groaned. Ah, oh, this is awful. Let's cut out early. Go see Elf. All right, yeah, we'll tell Hebert what. We have to get home early to beat the traffic? We live here, Colt retorted. You're getting your time off. Be happy about that. For some strange, strange reason, the supernatural branch doesn't automatically give agents time off for Christmas. A travesty, I know but I'm always able to request the 25th off, and they've always approved it. Ah, uh, what do you ever do here without me? I sighed sarcastically, shaking my head. Well, work in all likelihood, he replied, without missing a beat. Which is what I should be doing now, but instead I'm talking to you. I'm honored, I replied, placing my hand over my heart. 
Truly, putting your game of spider solitaire on hold is a noble sacrifice. Yeah, go bother someone else, he told me, not even bothering to look up from the screen this time as he typed away. I'm nearly finished with this week's case file. Your insistence on taking some poor desk jockey's work never fails to amaze me, I told him, shaking my head as I stood up. I'll go see what the word is at the water cooler. You're no fun. I never have been, he said. And it should go without saying, but the water cooler at the FBI Supernatural branch was the mother of all office water coolers. Well, the water cooler itself was really nothing special. Most office water coolers aren't. It's the talk that goes on around it that sets it apart from the crowd. And that day was no exception. After tiptoeing behind Bull's desk, I made my way across the office to the group that always seemed to be huddled around the cooler like moths to a bulb. Sometimes I wonder if our branch is the best use of government funding. There were four agents there, two pairs of partners, and they greeted me as I joined them. I recognized agents Josh Matthews and Edison Sosa, though the two female ones I didn't know. Pearson, Matthews nodded, raising his plastic cup to me. I see you got to Agent Owen. Well done. I spread my arms. What can I say? I'm good at what I do. Of course, Hebert wishes that what I did was work, but <laughs> alas, they chuckled at that. Did you guys hear about the party? One of the agents I didn't recognize asked as I filled a cup. My ears perked up. A party? I asked. Yeah, the office Christmas party, the agent I assumed to be her partner added. We got a memo inviting us to Building E on the 25th. I didn't recognize the agent it was from. Not recognizing an agent's name is far from uncommon. I didn't even know these two. But not recognizing a building is a completely different story. I'd been with the branch for six years, and in that time, there had never been a building E. Well, A, B, C, D, sure, but no E, though. That's impossible, I told her. Building E? I know, it doesn't exist, she quickly assured me. That's why I thought it was weird. Didn't you get anything? Nope, I replied. But I may have to crash this party. No one in the branch throws a Christmas party without inviting Tia Pearson. Well, up to you, she said. Christmas Day at 7, Building E. Oh, I'll be there, I replied. By the way, I don't think we've been introduced. What's your name? I'm Sophia Ruff, and this is my partner, Peyton Wagner. The first replied, then gestured to the other. Well, she's a rookie. I'm in my second year. Oh, pleasure, I nodded, finishing my water. I'll see you Thursday night. See you then, Sophia said. My gears on my brain working, trying to figure out what to do in this odd scenario. I returned to my office and paused in the doorway. So, I said drawing out the end of the word to attract Colt's attention. So? Colt asked, clearly annoyed as he glanced up from his computer. There's a uh, Christmas party on the 25th, and we're going, I told him, not trying very hard to suppress a smile. By we, uh, you of course mean... I mean we. It's after work, so you don't have any excuse to miss it, I finished. I wasn't going to tell him in case I was wrong, but the real reason I wanted him there was because something was setting off my gut, and I might need backup. If this is going to be such a grand party, we would have gotten an email. Colt returned. How do you find out about it? You haven't checked your inbox in three months. Well, that's because if someone has something important to say, they say it, I said. Or well, some rookie, Agent Roth, I believe. She told me about it. He paused. Agent Sophia Roth, he asked, cocking his head. I appear to have garnered his interest. Suppose it is, I said, grinning slyly as I walked to his desk, smelling blood in the water. Would that change your opinion of the party as a whole? Well, it was just a question, he replied. Well, I don't think it was just a question, I said, wagging my finger. I think that you would very much like to go to a party with Agent Sophia Roth. You're being immature. I asked a question, 
He snapped moodily. Oh, fine, if you won't answer, I'll go. Where is it? Ah, you'll go, will you? I asked, leaning on his desk. That doesn't seem like a very accurate response, given your lack of interest. Answer the question, Colt said, ignoring my comment. Where's the party? You're always bugging me about being more festive. Take your win. Well, that's a thing. It's at Building E, I told him, momentarily allowing the topic to change. I know it doesn't exist, but your, um, friend, Agent Roth, assured me that that's where the invite told her to go. She's not my... He began, then paused. After a moment, he said, This isn't one of your silly little pranks, is it? Because it's not a very good one. That's exactly why you should know it's not mine, I replied. I'd never stoop this low. Way too easy. You just made a rookie-ass bull for the file on Biggest Dickers, he pointed out. <laughs> exactly. I have standards, I returned. Anyway, let's check it out. I highly doubt we'll end up collateral damage of a rookie prank, and if we do, I don't know, call it karma. What, for all the pranks you've pulled? Colt sat back, folding his arms. It doesn't sound like karma to me. Are you in or out, Buddha? I asked, standing up and backing away from his desk. <sighs> I'm in, he sighed, rolling his eyes. After a beat, he added, I'm going to regret it, I'm sure, but I'm in. I nodded. I felt more comfortable with him there as backup, though. I was a bit worried he'd spend too much time under the mistletoe and end up not being there if something actually went down. And oh boy, did something actually go down. But we'll get to that later. December 24. The previous day I'd been called into a last-minute meeting, preventing me from investigating the so-called Building E. But on Wednesday, the day before the party, I had a chance to circle the massive perimeter of the branch's national headquarters. We're located in Denver, Colorado, a few miles out of the main city, and our compound is disguised using some masking technology developed by well, someone. I don't know, they probably went over it in training. There'd always been, as long as I can remember, five buildings. A, B, C, D, and I for information. That's the archive building. A was the main office building. B contained laboratories and other research facilities. C held all communications, and D was where all the classified things happened. I've never been in there. The archive building was shaped like an hourglass, I guess, an architectural decision made by the head archivist. But the other four were just normal office buildings. As I walked around the headquarters, rubbing my shoulders against the chilly Colorado air, I was thinking about how it wouldn't make sense for a building E. We had all we needed in those five. But after I rounded the corner of Building B, there it was. Building E. Looming out from the other building's shadow at the far end of the compound. Well, I'll be damned, I whispered to myself, pausing at the base of this mysterious structure. It looked like some combination of the other four. The architectural style matched up with the FBI's theme, and it even had the car slot at the entrance that would unlock the door. It was only one story which... Could have explained how I'd missed it before among the towering buildings it was nestled behind, but it was still odd that I'd never noticed it. As I stared in confusion at the building, I began to notice that something was off. It was featureless. Everything was plain, untextured, like the building was three miles away and I couldn't make out any details. I squinted, wondering if my eyes were playing tricks on me but the walls remained unnaturally smooth and the windows retained their oddly dark tint. I took a step forward to investigate further, and that's when the stench hit me. Something was emitting a rancid, pungent scent, assailing my nostrils like a freight train. I almost stumbled back, coughing at the smell, but I managed to regain my composure enough to bury my nose deep in my arm to block it out. Jesus Christ! I thought to myself, shaking my head and wincing. Someone's got to get a janitor over here. I fumbled around in my pocket with my other hand, 
eyes watering from the smell, and pulled my keycard out of it. However, when I slid it into the slot, nothing happened. Not that I was denied access. That would be accompanied by a red light and a buzz of rejection. No, nothing happened. I suppose the sensor must have been broken. And I shrugged, figuring that now I knew the building was there, there was no need to spend more time suffering through the smell, and backed away as quickly as I could, returning to work. I explained what I'd seen to Colt, and he didn't seem to think it was all that strange, figuring that they were probably getting ready for this grand party, and that it was closed off until then. He told me he'd check it out after work, just in case. And with that, the day of the party arrived. December 25th. When I got there, maybe a little late, around 7.30, I saw that Building E had undergone a complete transformation overnight. Red and green strands of tinsel looped around the entire exterior, and spotlights placed strategically around the building cast rays of light on them, setting festive sparkles out across the night sky. A false chimney had been erected, with smoke billowing out and an abandoned sleigh next to it, and lights and sounds coming from inside signified that the party was already well underway. I whistled, standing outside in a light flurry of snow that had sprung up, unimpressed with the effort they'd been willing to put into a mere holiday party. Strangely enough, Colt hadn't returned my calls all day, and an agent I spoke with said he didn't show up to work which I didn't think much of at the time. You know, flu season and all that. And it certainly didn't come to mind when I was about to enter what looked like one of the more entertaining Christmas parties I'd been to in some time. And, on the inside, it matched. A cheery holiday song rang out from the unseen speakers. A crowd of people I could only assume were agents danced around, some anointed with pointed Santa hats, all with varying amounts of alcohol already consumed. I nodded, looking around the party for someone I recognised to mingle with, but it seemed like I hadn't met anyone there. Sure, it was only at a glance, but even when I looked longer, there wasn't a single familiar agent. That was impossible. There was a pretty big difference between not knowing a few agents around the office and going to a party of this magnitude and not seeing anyone I knew. I began to make my way through the crowd, searching at least for Colt, someone who I hoped would be there, and even him I couldn't find. As I dodged dancing agents, worrying my way to the other side of the room, I started to attract stares from the party's attendants. I muttered greetings and nodded, excusing myself as the stares turned from those of slight annoyance to confusion, which set off the alarm bells in my head that had already been ringing to some degree for quite a bit of time. I chose one agent at random and approached her, smiling in a half-hearted attempt at a greeting. Hi, my name's Tia. Well, I'm sorry, I don't believe we've met, she replied, cocking her head at me. Were you invited here? Well, actually, um, Agent Roth was the one, I answered. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was a VIP event. She paused for a moment looking confused, and then said, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if you're supposed to be here. All right, I'll look into it. I nodded, about as confused as she appeared, and then walked away. As I did, I glanced over my shoulder, and noticed that the agent, along with several around her, were all staring at me in a rather odd manner. Take a picture, it'll last longer, I muttered, not particularly intending for them to hear it as I made my way deeper into the party. However, as I weaved in and out of the crowd, dodging agents, I ended up slamming right into one who'd been standing in my path, sending me stumbling backward as I apologized profusely, feeling like I'd hit a brick wall. And when I looked up, I saw why. I'd bumped into Bull Schultz. He stood over me glowering down, and I was immediately struck by the similarity to his namesake. My initial relief at finally seeing someone I recognized quickly turned to, well, fear, and I got. Oh, hey, uh, Bull, nice to, uh, uh, sorry about this morning, that was just, 
you know, a, a joke, I... Who are you? He grunted. I looked sideways at him. Bull, it's me. Look, I consistently top the list of your least favorite agents. What's up? As I stared at him, though, I began to notice little things. His face didn't seem quite right. Well, it felt like Bull's, but that was just because it was on Bull's body. His bone structure, his mouth, his nose, everything seemed like it was just thrown together in some amalgamation of facial features. I'm just gonna... Uh, I trailed off, mumbling as I dropped my drink on the carpet and backed up. You're not supposed to be here, he growled. He didn't follow as I backed away. Suddenly the room began to feel a whole lot more crowded, and it seemed as if the dancing agents were pressing in towards me, trapping me in. As I looked around, I began to notice things similar to the agent that looked like Bull. I saw features of agents I recognized, a nose here, a face there, and so on, and it stirred something in my memory. A faint inkling of an archive I'd gone over long, long ago. Something Colt probably knew far more about than I did. And then, I remembered the smell, and the odd vague details the building had seemed to have the day before. I remembered that Colt hadn't been at work all day. And then, it clicked. My eyes widened, and I yanked my radio out from under my shirt. Dialing it to the proper frequencies, I began to shove my way through the party, towards a stairway at the back of the room. Night shift. Night shift. This is Pearson. I have a class 3 scenario in building E. That's correct, building E, I said as loudly as I dared, though it was evidently too loud. The agents noticed, and with blank, ominous stares began to close in on me, blocking my path to the stairs. Repeat, building E. Reinforcements are needed. I believe a Yakisa is in play. I quickly said, before cocking my arm back and hurling my radio at the false agent in front of me. He caught him squarely on the nose, surprising him, and I took advantage of his momentary distraction, charging forward. I knocked him backwards, his arms flung out of the crowd, reaching to restrain me, but I'd gotten a good enough start to clear them, breaking for the stairs as the party goers fell in behind me. I didn't look back. I knew all there was to be seen was a horde of creatures mimicking humanity, yet inhuman in their relentless pursuit. I burst through the door of the stairwell, vaulting over the railing and landing with a thud on the flight below, wincing as I hadn't paid nearly enough attention during our tuck and roll training. However, I didn't have time to linger on the sharp pain in my left ankle, so I pushed through the doorway on that floor to reveal exactly what I'd hoped for. Over in the corner opposite me, I saw three unconscious forms. Colt, along with Agent Roth and Agent Wagner, and then, in the center of the dark, dusty basement, a massive, pulsating purple organism, veins running crisscross patterns across its surface, and a gooey liquid emanating from its many pores. I didn't have much time to react. I had had the foresight to bring my gun along, so as I ran further into the basement to escape the creatures not too far behind me, I tugged it out of my back holster. However, just as I took aim, I stumbled on an unseen protrusion from the purple mass and fell to the ground. I let out a curse, finally glancing back at the horde streaming out of the stairwell. They looked like mindless zombies, pouring towards me with only one goal in mind. An identical blank rage thinly veiled in each of their expressions. I gulped, turned back around, and fired my pistol into the gelatinous mass, hoping I'd remembered something right. And as soon as the first bullet made contact, I knew I had. The entire lump exploded in a shower of purple blood, coating me from head to toe in the substance, doing so just as the front of the horde had reached me. As the leader... Bull's mimic stretched out a hand to grab me, it suddenly began to melt into the same purple goo that covered me, the rest of its arm and body following not long after. 
The other creatures in the mob exhibited similar effects, and within moments, so did the walls, at least the ones that weren't simply made of dirt. The entirety of Building E was melting down into the purple mucus, what had moments ago been an entire complex being reduced to mere sludge. I crawled over to the unconscious agents, confirming that they were just unconscious and not dead, and sat next to them for a few minutes, cradling my injured ankle while I waited. It wasn't long before the night shift pulled us out of the pit the creature had dug for the basement, and everyone made it out okay. It turned out Colt had gone in after work to look into it, just like he said he would, and the Yakisa, the name for this creature, had lured him into the basement before injecting him with a sedative. Agents Roth and Wagner had apparently been the targets as they had been invited to the party. They told us the creature had seemed much more prepared for them than for Colt or I. We don't know why the creature was after them, or if it was sent by someone, but an investigation is being opened at this very moment. Yakisas are annoying things. They're shapeshifters that anchor around their hearts. The purple blob I shot to kill this one, and once their heart takes root, they can transform into anything, organic or inorganic, no matter how large. This one had taken the form of a building, copying architecture from the other four, and a host of agents, copying features from whoever it observed, and lured real agents in. Well, the thing is, it takes longer for it to transform the bigger the disguise is. And this was obviously a very big disguise. So when I'd seen it, it was most likely in the early stages, explaining the blank features and deactivated card scanner. Well, all in all, it was one strange Christmas. I should have known better than to expect the FBI to throw a decent holiday party. But I suppose hindsight's twenty twenty. So... If you receive an invitation to a party this holiday season that you don't recognize, or if you notice a rotten smell around a co-worker you just can't remember seeing before, stay away. Stay far away. Oh, and in case anyone was wondering, Colt never worked up the nerve to ask our agent Roth. Bummer. Maybe next week some vampires will throw a New Year's Eve party. So, my dear friends, seems like a very good time to thank you once again for all of your wonderful support throughout 2021. It's been an interesting year, to say the least, for all of us, and, um, well, we've not all made it to the end, sadly. But for those of us who are here, thanks again for your support. And, well, I'll keep doing what I keep doing, and I hope you're going to keep coming back and listening to me do what I do. <laughs> Like I said, um, doing this would be nothing without having an audience to enjoy it. So, thank you, thank you so much for keeping coming back. And, um, yep, yeah, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Got some huge stories lined up for the coming year. Um, some old series to finish off that I finally need to get around to doing. But, uh, rest assured, I will be making an effort to round off all those series. And I've got not too much to do, to be honest. Some hour-longs, two hour-longs, three hour-long stories... Uh, from some of your old favourite authors. So, um, it's going to be a good one, I think. 2022. Well, my dear friends, a short one for this evening. But, um, yeah, something good lined up for tomorrow night. Christmas, New Year, doesn't matter to me. Just keep them coming. Well, my dear friends, till tomorrow. Very, very sweet dreams. And bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.